Hi, this is Paul Gregg. Again, I'm going to try to make a short video about some work I did in 2017. I'll make some longer videos because I, after I wrote the two ebooks, I had uh, occasion to do a lot more in depth research that I haven't really documented. So part of this is just trying to document before I forget about it um, some extra work I did. At the time, I was working with some students at MIT on building a backyard roller coaster. I was kind of telling them they could build a PVC backyard roller coaster if they only wanted to use it for a week, and the riders were only a certain weight, and uh, and they limited it to a certain number of Gs. So we were in the middle of this, and the questions came up about how safe uh, PVC roller coaster was, and I concentrated on several uh, weak spots, the uh, rail to tie joint and PVC fracture toughness, and um, this is just, uh, I'll document this, it's a four-point bend test of curved PVC rails, not dynamic tests, not impact tests, just static tests. And uh, basically, uh, if you're interested in the engineering of uh, uh, roller coasters, uh, the detailed engineering, and you are uh, got an engineering mind and you want to know what's really going on, this, then you, this video is for you. Um, so uh, we were talking about the ductility of uh, PVC conduit, and, and I decided to do these quick four-point bend tests of Schedule 40 and Schedule 80. I had been, uh, three years earlier, I had been uh, working on the same issue, fracture toughness, uh, due to sun conditioning, uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation that's in the sunlight, and how it degraded uh, PVC, like it does almost all composites and plastics. And so they had been sun conditioning for about 27 months, I think. And um, I just did this, uh, this uh, static test. I did a kind of a, made my own test lab kind of in my garage. So these, uh, they're all one and a half inch diameter and they were just sitting out on this rock for a couple of years. Uh, the only difference, they're, they're all 1.9 inch diameter, outer diameter, and then the Schedule 40 is 0.145 thick, the Schedule 80 is just thicker, same outer diameter. Um, so I said as long as I was, I was conditioning, sun conditioning these to do fracture toughness testing, and uh, I said, oh, well, I'll do a little bit of static testing just to make sure that's not a problem. They had previously... Uh, hot formed with sand to uh, the 69.75 inch center line radius, which is one of the radii I used to build backyard roller coasters. This is a four point bend test. You hold it on two far points and then you, you, you push on it with uh, two points in the middle. And here's the shear diagram. There's only shear on the outside. The reason we do four point bend tests typically is uh, to get a constant uh, a uniform moment across a test section without any shear in there, and that's typically why the, how these tests are done. This is my test setup. It's a two by six uh, wood frame with a bottle jack in there. So the specimen is is held against uh, what a point here on the one end and a point here on the other end. I just use Schedule 80 pipes in there to to for lack of anything better to kind of provide a little cushion for the endpoints. And then here's what uh, typically is on the main wheels of a backyard roller coaster cart that I designed. Two wheels about three and a half inches apart. This uh, a lot depends on what wheel you choose. Uh, most roller skate and skateboard wheels are are pretty soft, you know, and, and I've, I've uh, you get less friction with the harder, hardest harder wheel you can get, and so I've been I've been using these uh, 62 millimeter Champs figure skating, figure quad indoor roller skate wheels. They have a durometer hardness of 100 101A, which is about the hardest I could find. I would like to use uh, bigger wheels, but uh, they all they always come softer. I haven't found any really hard big wheels. Um, well, that's another whole discussion about wheel choice. So this is what I've been using, and so this is what I used in the test. Um, so this is the formed rail, 
and you just put it in there, you pump up the bottle jack and uh, watch what happens as the wheels press into the rail and as the rail is, is bent uh, by these four load points, the two load points and two reaction points. I, I always tested it in this configuration so it'd be more stable and plus the, the, the forming strain is greater on the outside of the radius and so that worked out well. The rope is just there for safety in case the bottle jack decides to take a trip sideways. It's a four ton bottle jack, so 8,000 pounds, and, but it's just a screwed together wood test frame, so I wanted to be safe. Uh, since there could be a brittle, brittle failure, I always wore a face shield when I was doing this, but I didn't see any brittle failures because it was a static test. Remember, this is a, fair, a, a static test, which means it's loaded very slowly. If I was impact testing, which I'll cover in other videos, um, then it's a whole different deal. So PVC is very much sensitive to strain rate, which means how fast are you loading it? Are you dropping something on it or are you just pushing on it really slowly? Um, test temperature 43 degrees. Uh, that's just the temperature in the garage just to, for documentation. Fairly cold. Um, this is a typical uh, test the uh, this uh, bottle jack pushes. Oh, I didn't talk about it, but I I just uh, put a PVC pipe on the end of the bottle jack arm, and then I had little uh, little slots where I could put a a string held down by a spring like a fish scale that goes to about 80 pounds or something. And uh, I did some calculation to find out what the loads were, but I, then I went I took this whole test set up to the University of Washington uh, test frame up there, put it in a, uh, a test frame and compared uh, my calculated loads to the loads outputted by the universal test frame, the University of Washington. And then I, and then I kind of calibrated my whole system so that I take whatever, whatever load comes out of the spring scale times it by 39.6, and that's the load that is being exerted in the test. So I'm fairly confident that that, that was fairly accurate, even though it was kind of a rinky-dink setup. I, I also uh, determined deflections just by stopping every once in a while, checking the, writing down the load, and then writing down the deflection uh, used just by a digital caliper. So here's uh, the test, schedule 40. Uh, now, I had to define failure because nothing really broke, but uh, when, the, when the load deflection curve started to bend over, I said, okay, that's, that's failed. And uh, so, as expected, the Schedule 80, which is quite a bit thicker, held a lot more load. Um, you can see that the... Uh, not only is the PVC rail deflecting, but the, these are the hardest wheels I could find. They're deflecting too. And so um, it's a wheel test as well as a, uh, a rail test. I just use these wheels because they're representative of what I was using. If, if I use steel wheels, obviously uh, they wouldn't bend this much. Uh, if I use softer skateboard wheels, they would bend a lot more. Uh, just you just want to be representative of, of what you're trying to to duplicate in a test lab versus a real life. So I use the those same exact wheels I was using on my roller coaster carts. Um, so this is a tested specimen. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, the gray PVC conduit PVC uh, turns white which is either crazing or cavitation, little air bubbles or some kind of surface crazing. It's, it's really nice because you can kind of tell the, what, how much it's strained by whether it's turned a, co a color or not. I've seen this in uh, pro high performance aerospace adhesives that I used to work on at Boeing. You could uh, see when it was about to fail, you'd see some kind of color change in the adhesive. Uh, none of the six specimens that I tested uh, cracked or anything like that. So this is a very 
I, and, and I was taking these by hand, you know, just stopping every once, every, every so often and uh, checking the deflection. So I would, I would define the, uh, failure by when this quits being kind of straight. You know, these are the two Schedule 80 tests, and these are four Schedule 40 tests. Some are painted, some are unpainted, some were, uh, I think they, they were all, uh, um, had gone two years in sunlight. And so it really, it really doesn't make any effect at all. Now, I'll talk about this. When they say uh, PVC isn't as strong after it's been subjected to ultraviolet radiation in the sun, that's not really true. In fact, most polymers and uh, epoxy resins, they get stronger with age and they get stiffer with age. What goes down is the fracture toughness. And that is when something is strained really quickly, like when you drop something on it, then that degrades. So, so there, it's incorrect to say the strength went down uh, because the PVC sat in the sun a long time. The strength actually goes up. It's the fracture toughness that goes down. And that is just the uh, function of strain rate. So, and I'll, uh, like I said, I'm going to make a big, uh, longer video about my fracture toughness testing. But this is, this is the starting point for uh, static testing. You can see, yeah, the, the Schedule 80 is stronger than the Schedule 40. And this, when you work these numbers out, it, it comes out to about, be about the same bending strength as PVC, the tensile strength of PVC, if you go through the calculations, which I won't do here, but uh, for engineers, that's uh, an interesting thing to do. So, yeah, the thicker Schedule PVC is 75% stronger than Schedule 40. 72% uh, stiffer in bending than Schedule 40. Um, I have done some impact testing in 2014, and we're aging these um, rails to do some more testing, in, which I will document. I was uh, concerned about it. The... the um, you know, you're not really too concerned about dropping rocks on your PVC backyard roller coaster, but it's so important to uh, align your fastener heads so that the side wheels or main wheels or upstop wheels cannot strike a fastener head because that is the that's a, an instance where the PVC next to the um, fastener would uh, have a high straight, you know, have put a load very quickly on the on the PVC, and the, and that's where I, I had an incident where um, a wheel hit a, 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 a fastener head, and I got a crack in my PVC. So it is a, it is a concern. Uh, you eliminate that concern by uh, making sure the none of the wheels can hit fastener heads and not dropping rocks on your back of your roller coaster. And not, you know, being reasonable about how long your roller coaster is going to be up. You know, I've had them up for five or six years. But, you know, I, I test them every year, do a dynamic test. There's no clear difference in the static properties of between painted and unpainted uh, UV-exposed uh, PVC. <clears throat> Previous tests, impact tests, show about a 30% reduction in drop test fracture toughness with prolonged UV, UV. But these weren't fracture toughness again. These are just static tests. Um, and there's really no degradation over time. So thanks for listening. Bye.